What's going on? I go by the name of Chris Ludacris Bridges. I'm a rapper, actor, and today, a food photographer, believe it or not, thanks to Skillshare. How's it looking in Georgia today? It's uh, great, man. I wish you could see the background. It's like a perfect day outside. It's like wow. 76 degrees. It's sunny. There's not a cloud in the sky. So we feeling good. Honestly, I think you should have an eighth career as a weatherman. I'd watch that every day. <laughs> you know, I've never had that suggestion, but I might take that into consideration, man. I always love different side hustles where you can have multiple streams of income. You've had a, like a really long career doing a lot of different things. Like, how's your mindset as like an eternal student? I'm just a curious person period, about everything in the world. And I feel like there's an unlimited amount of, of education that you can give to yourself. And that's the best way, self-improvement. You said that you're really passionate about photography. So that puts you at film, music, entrepreneurship, and now photography. When did you first, when did that interest bud for you? What like lit that fire? I'm one of those do-it-yourself individuals. Like I just literally, even if I end up hiring someone to do the job, I've always been that way. I have to at least understand the fundamentals of everything that goes on around my life and my family's life. So with that being said, if I was traveling somewhere with just my family, then I'm not about to hire a photographer to come with me. I'm going to become the photographer. You know, I start, it started that way and then all of a sudden I started having an affinity and a love for it. And then I started buying different lenses and, and different cameras and all of a sudden, I'm like, I, I actually could do this. And <laughs> you know, the only problem is you can't video record yourself by yourself. Sometimes you need someone to stand a distance from you and do it, but you can put it on that self timer like a motherfucker though. So hey, it can ha hey, can we curse in this or no, no, no. It's really not. <laughs> if anything, I wanna encourage people while I'm doing this Skillshare to continue to learn and continue to be a do-it-yourselfer because you can learn anything, especially over the internet. You're here right now, I'm a stranger, and you're trusting me to teach you something, which speaks hey, volumes about- Hey, 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 man, about, I'm like, not trusting you just yet. I'm gonna see how good of a teacher you are, and I'm gonna judge for myself okay. through the duration of what we have going on, and then you let me be the judge on whether you're a good teacher or oh, not. I'm just sure. giving you a chance. That's all I'm doing. I give everyone a chance. I mean, look at your hair and my hair is pretty similar. I gotta give you a chance. Yeah, if you just reach under your toes, probably like a report card or something you can just send <laughs> off for me after that. Stereotypical photography or the regular photography, whatever you wanna call it, shooting from a distance, doing all these different things, and food photography. What the hell is the difference? Oh, you could be a photographer, but food photography, oh, that's something totally different. That takes a whole other type of skill set. So that's why I'm, that's really why I'm here today, because I'm confused on what the f difference of regular photography and food photography is, man. I can shoot close up, I can do this. So many things that you have to deal with, if you're especially you were traveling, there's light that you don't control. There are people that are in your shot. But food photography, from the ground up, it almost resembles painting in a way, because you are setting everything to be perfect. You have so much more control, but because food is something you see every day, food photography, it's so important for you to be able to translate exactly what the value proposition of that food is to the user immediately. What plate color contrasts well with this? How's the light hitting this? Yeah, it's like taking it a step further and things just absolutely looking perfect, like in all the damn commercials that we see when we go to these restaurants and the food looks absolutely <laughs> nothing like what we see it on television in a commercial. Food photography has to look perfect. So I get it, man. You're, I kind of, I kind of like you as a teacher right now, man. It's only been like five minutes, but I'm, 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 I'm digging your style. I'm gonna be honest with you. I like, I'm already learning something. I haven't even picked up a camera yet. However you choose to shoot food, you don't have to do this like, um, like. Pinterest level where it like is looking absolutely perfect. You can make it like messy, loud. You can make it like whatever you think is best based on like what you think the people at your restaurant are looking for. We want to just include all these little details so that people are excited. And just like you're excited, I want to be able to help us translate that with food. Tell me about this restaurant. What inspired it? What are the main culinary principles? What are thing thing what are flavors and tastes that I'm looking forward to seeing if I next time I'm in the Atlanta airport, which is actually in like two weeks. So chicken and beer is so simple. It's one of those things where yes, it's just chicken and beer, but how do you expand this and make it a complex restaurant? because you add so many different things. There are a lot of different beers and there's a lot of different ways that you can cook chicken. So while we were talking about there are certain great songs in the world that no matter when you hear them, you kind of remember what you were doing in your life during that time frame. That's how I feel a great restaurant should be, a great food should be. And that's what Chicken and Beer is all about. And who the hell would have thought a third album that you know went triple platinum will turn into an actual restaurant? So that just lets you know sky's the limit. 
Go after your dreams. Continue to learn. Continue to evolve. If you don't evolve, you'll evaporate. Have you ever heard that? No. And I'll take it. Don't evaporate. Continue to learn. I have some little things to show you to like make sure the textures look good, the colors look good, and we're focusing on our light, but Perfect. let's get started. I love it. I can't wait, man. Let me grab my, my little camera. Hold on a yeah, second. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, guys, here's my cannon. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> now listen, can you take like chicken wings? Like, can I can I take some uh, pictures of some chicken wings with this thing? Cause I feel like you can I'm film ready. the next 10 Fast and Furious movies with that. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. To take great food photography, your first step is just understanding your camera. I know you shoot on a Canon already. I also have one here. Yeah. Um, and you, you don't really shoot with a 50 millimeter. Do you know what the aperture of that lens is? 1.2. 1.2. Oh, we have the same one. Great. I knew you were going to try and test me. See, I know what I'm talking about. It's no test. I just want to know so I can explain it. Our main focus when we're shooting the food is our aperture. Aperture essentially is how much light the camera lets in. And the bigger the hole is, the more light it'll let in and the more depth you'll get. Number two is how quickly the shutter opens and closes. We're less worried about that because the food's not going anywhere unless you eat it, right? I'm a manual guy, by the way. I, I try to do it as much because then you continue to learn, just like we started 100%. off talking about. When you put it in manual, it, it forces you to learn every single detail of all of yep. the specifics. So I love manual mode. You never want your shutter speed to be, um, to be less than the inverse of the focal length. This lens is 50 millimeters, so you do not want your shutter speed to be any lower than a 50th of a second. So this is food photography or all photography? All photography, but food specifically, because with food, since the food will not be moving and you'll be moving, if there is, if you move at all, it'll be really obvious. Got it, that's good so to know. There's essentially three different ways to take good food photos. There's overhead, which you're looking at right here. And so for overhead, you can do like little patterns, or this is good for like soups, grits, I know that you have grits there. And Southern food in general, so there's a lot of really good texture in the mac and cheese. Um, yeah. in the waffle, in the chicken. And so we're actually gonna spend most of our time shooting at a lower angle and really focusing on the texture that we want. The thing I wanna ask you is, where's the light coming from in the room? Like, where are the windows? So the light is uh, right, right here to the front of me for the most part. Food doesn't move, and sometimes the light moves. So you need to be able to add or reduce light. The white side adds light, and the black side cuts it. Just adding a subtle piece of white to bounce it is a much more helpful thing that you want to do. See, this is interesting. Honestly. This is the stuff I need to know. We're getting yep. somewhere, man. I'm, I'm loving it. So we have two different color plates here. We have a, like a smaller plates that are like a deep blue, and then we have this like kind of soft gray here. For the most part, Southern food is kind of warm colored, and it's a little bit softer. And so I think it's really important, like if you look at how this plate lays on the table, that yeah. we have appropriate contrast. If we were to put grits on this, you wouldn't be able to see the detail as much. Like, let's say it's served in like a bowl style, whatever, like a, the chicken and waffles in the restaurant. It'll look appetizing because you're plating it there. But if I were to photograph the chicken in a bowl style, um, it's going to be hard to see the texture of the chicken. It's going to be hard to see the texture of the waffle without shooting it from above. And if I shoot it from above, then I don't get that same drizzle of the syrup coming down. I don't get that texture of right when you look at like the difference between the um, the breading of the chicken and the waffle. Like, there's a lot that's missed there, and so that detail is important. All right, look what I just pulled out of the oven. Check this out. Southern hospitality itself. Okay. This is chicken and beer's finest. This is pretty much the signature dish. You got your chicken, you got your biscuit, you got your greens, and of course the sweet potatoes, all just made with perfection and made with all types of love. If your food isn't cooked with love and affection, then I don't want it. I don't want it either. So what the hell do you have in front of you? So we got some collards, we got some um, mashed potatoes, coleslaw, we got some chicken and waffles, got some black eyed peas and some sausage gravy. I know when we first think about waffles, so I'm turning it actually to the more toasted side so that when I place it down and I put chicken on top of it, you can see it more easily. That, that chicken looks a little dry, bro. Yeah, I mean, we had it. I mean, listen, <laughs> it looked like you gotta eat that chicken in the rain, my brother. I, I don't know what, you, what you're gonna do about that. Oh, man. But <laughs> let's finish the lesson and we'll figure it out later. The first thing I wanna point out is, as you're looking at this, since it's on the smaller plate, you'll see immediately that the waffle has taken up the whole plate. Right. So when we're doing portrait photography, you never want to have your subject's shoulders take up the whole photo. It's like a mug shot. You don't know how <laughs> big they are. You have no sense of size, so everything just seems too large. Right, and that's right. not good when you're shooting people. But food, larger than life, right? Yep. 
I would love if you could just slide the chicken to a, just a little bit to a corner of the waffle, a little more of the corner, so I could see more of that waffle. Uh, is that better? Yeah. Oh, see, you got it right there. You see that mac and cheese? You should, that's a really lovely plate color. Yeah, contrast and compliment. Yeah. As a quick example, if I take this avocado and we place it on this plate, your ability to see the details a lot worse than over here. If you don't mind for a second, I'm gonna take a couple test shots just to see what I'm looking like. Ooh, ho, ho. ow! You're at a halfway angle right now, Chris. Yeah. And so I either want you to be completely above it or I want you to meet it at your eye level. Like almost, think about the, the eye level of a child, right? A child seeing this food for the first time. They want to, they'd get down, they look right at the thing, almost like they're about to grab it. Right, how's that? Yep, that's good, that's good. Ooh, ho, ho. Basically what my goal is with this tripod is to show you what these ang how these angles are different. So here we were, you were doing this before, where it's kind of an in-between angle where it's a little high, but you're not really seeing a ton, right? right? And so what I would actually want you to do is to get a little bit lower. Now all of a sudden you can really see these ridges and details. Oh wow. See your stuff's looking good. And you have good, you have good background, good texture. Let me see what else. Let me see that um the catfish again. Of course, man. Expect nothing less from me. This is what I do for a wow, living. Wow, that's beautiful. Why don't you get a, pull the catfish just a little closer to you at the end of that table? And then just go ahead and like, even if you stand up and just give it a little bit of squat, get nice and close. I like that angle you're choosing so much. That fish is wide, right? I want yep. you to shoot so that instead of shooting it like this, side to side, I want to shoot it so that I see the, the front of the fish. Gotcha. I want to turn it. I want to, you want to guide the eye of the viewer. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Now just give me a slight, slight, slight off. Just put a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, rotate that. And yeah, perfect, perfect. Woo, woo, yeah, look at that, boy. So just another photography thing, your eye always goes to the brightest part of the image. And so if you, if you put something super white or super bright right in front of it, it's gonna be really distracting. See if you can get a little bit lower for this one. Okay. Good detail. That sh the chicken looks moist, nice. Hey man, one of us gotta have some moist chicken. <laughs> Look, yo, that mac and cheese is wow. I've been wanting to shoot this, man. The lighting's perfect for it. Keep moving around the piece um, so you can see what you think works best, right? Somewhere around here seems like the best. Yeah, just gotta get it. perfect. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Man, this shit is hard work, man. Like you said, damn. I'm exhausted, I've only taken like five pictures so far. I'm like, I'm ready to take a nap, man. I don't know about you. God damn. So let's say we are shooting a dry chicken. Something else to point out. Add a little olive oil on a brush and just kind of tap the pieces of it to give it that glisten. And then you take this bounce card, add a little bit of light to it. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely make it glisten. I like that. And that just makes it just glisten up and look good. <laughs> food photography can make certain people, if the photo is right, eat certain kinds of food that they never even wanted to try before. A hundred percent. I'm confident 100%. about that. Definitely makes you want to experiment. Man, listen, man, thank you for opening my eyes and I've already learned something. I'm extremely appreciative and I've gained a lot of insight, you know, into exactly what I was so confused about before we had this, this session. I think the best photos are the ones you take of the people you love. It's made with love and you shoot it with love. It can't lose. You took the words out of my mouth, man. Thank you very much for this. Uh, the future looks bright and the lighting looks bright for all of the food that I will be shooting. Absolutely, I look forward to it. I'm, I'm ardently following Ludacris on Instagram, so let's see what happens next. Hell yeah, my man. <laughs> Explore your creativity at Skillshare.